Hi, this video is about the Finnish medical licensing exam for doctors graduate from outside the EU, aka the first clinical exam in Tampere, held by Valvera and Tampere Audio Pisto. My name is Sami, I'm general medical doctor, I'm licensed in the United Kingdom and in Finland and currently working as a general practitioner in a health center in Helsinki, Finland. The exam is six questions exam and every question takes 20 points. So it's maximum points are 120 and you need only 60 to pass. But if you take zero in any of these questions, you will not pass. But actually you get zero only when you did something really terrible to the patient. Like you hurt the patient like he has very high uh, potassium, for example, and you didn't notice, or renal failure, and you didn't treat it, then you'll get zero. Otherwise, if you are treating the patient um, reasonably well, you will take good mark and you will pass. So, the main points I want to mention about this exam is, one, language skills are definitely the most important thing. So, at this point, we're all doctors, we've done six months of amanuensi work in Finland, we've passed the acute test, so we need to show our language skills. When the examiners open your paper and see their questions, they are not going to judge you of how well you know Finnish, but what they care about is that they understand what they read. They get the idea that you put the treatment or the management for that question. So one of the tips to make them understand what you want to say is, for example, when I want to start some medication, to that to my patient, I put aloitetan in passive form, not aloitan. That's one important tip. So, secondly, Finnish text arrangement. You should put it the way that Finnish doctors put it, which is in this order. The anamnesi, the history, what happened to the patient before and what happened now, and uh, then the status, which is a clinical examination. What did, how did you examine the patient and what did you find? and then the vitalit or the vital signs, then bearing coquette, the laboratories, the investigations you did to your patient, x-rays, MRI, CT scan if you need, the diagnosis, basically in the exam you will think of differentials, and then eventually the sunitelma. The sunitelma is basically what you are going to do now and what you are thinking for the future, will you send the patient somewhere else, Will you recommend something for the patient? Will you recommend for the, for example, a specialist care or for the next doctor? These things you should try to do as much as writing work when you are an on one c You have to ask your colleagues to help you with these things and you have to ask them to help them with the text writing. The more, the more you do text writing during the one c the easier the exam is going to be. So the third point when you Put your text in the exam in this order that I said, anamnesis, status, varian uh, coquette, vitalit, diagnosis, and sunitelma. You have always to rule out the worst case scenario. Always, when, whatever case you take in the exam, you have always to think of what is going to kill this patient. I should figure it out, I should rule it out, and then I continue with my therapy or treatment for the patient. For example, if you get a case with shortness of breath, of course, you should rule first thing first pulmonary embolism or ischemic heart disease. And you should think of, the, you should tell the examiner that you are thinking of this scenario and you are going to do this examination or this investigation. And if you found that you, the, there is some dangerous disease, you will treat it that way. Then you come to the next point. You think of the next differential that could kill the patient. And then at the end, you put like, things that could be less life-threatening, for example, pneumonia or viral infection to the chest, and also you treat them. So it should be in that order. Fourth point is that explain in details. In the Finnish style, they love to write all the details. You might find it boring to write about all the details. You might not be used to it, but that's how they do it here, and you should do it like them. You should write all the details, all the possibilities, and you should be, be very careful not to hurt the patient. The past papers, the question from the past years with their answers, and try to study them very well. 
in fact memorize them by heart that will help you a lot with the language skills with how you with the, what the examiners want from you with how you arrange your answer and for the medical knowledge I studied, I studied from English sources like Oxford Handbook of Medicine I studied from Wikipedia I studied from YouTube but when I was done with studying from some material in English I came back to Lakari Kasikiria to check the same material now I understand the idea understand everything I just need to check it in Finnish language and so I could be able to explain it in Finnish language to the examiner a colleague asked me do I have to study the Kasikiria cover to cover my short answer is no my long answer is basically I studied the questions and I got an idea of what's like the most important thing at the exam I studied English resources as I said earlier and then I studied the material from the Kasikiria to understand the Finnish concept about this subject and to understand the language but keep in mind I've shortly done the lab British exam before that so I had like a lot of information in the background of my head so it also depends on how much your medical info are fresh now so it uh, depends but uh, for me I don't read the book from cover to cover the level of the medical knowledge required to pass this exam is really very reasonable it is the level of a general medical doctor working at a health center no one will ask you specialist level questions there are no rare syndromes, no rare conditions and no tricks at this exam so you need to know all the common conditions and all the fatal and dangerous diseases that you could treat or avoid or diagnose there and you also need to know all the conditions in this part of the world in the Nordic countries or Scandinavia for example the Murek Kuma infection or Pumala virus infection also diseases like sarcoidosis, multiple sclerosis are more common here than in warmer countries you need to know also uh, for example depression and diabetes are very very common in Finland two points very important two questions that show up very frequently on the exam the geriatric questions and the diabetes question the geriatric is some old person over eight years old it could be all the way down from having simple headache to you find them laying, laying down on the floor and you have to figure out what's wrong with them so you pay very good attention to the geriatric questions secondly the diabetic question like diabetes everybody knows that diabetes is one of the most important diseases in the world and you should just know how to treat it very well this point is really really important uh, you have to study the ENT ear, nose and throat diseases, the ophthalmology, psychiatry and dermatology really well and really carefully because you could get a question from these and if you don't know that question very well you will get zero regardless of what you are doing in the rest of the exam I pay really great attention to this because basically we as doctors we are more comfortable with internal medicine, surgery, gynecology and pediatrics you will find the link to the past year's questions in the description of this video below and also I highly recommend to go to the Facebook group Black Rexis Women it's amazing, fabulous, it helped me as many as well as many other doctors to pass this exam that was about it I hope that video was very useful for you and I wish you all the best and I wish you all pass the exam your opinion really matters to me if you like this video please share it with your friends and hit like and subscribe and if you have anything about this video any question if you want to give me your opinion about it please leave a comment in the in the comment section below thank you